Hey guys, uh, back for another one. Um, we've got a K1200 GT with a rattly clutch. It's done 59,000 miles. Um, oh my God, it's done 59,000 miles. It's like I can't speak. If I don't say um, I can't get the next sentence out. It's done 59,000 miles. Clutch is really rattly. The customers sourced a second hand clutch from another K1200 that's done 16,000 miles so we're going to take this clutch cover off um, remove said clutch, the rattly one um, and replace it, I'll show you, set it again I'll show you the the clutch on the bench, the one we're going to um, refit a couple, of, a couple of quirks with doing these um, the bolts, set it again, the bolts that hold the cover on are single use bolts, so you're going to need new bolts, obviously you'll need a new gasket um, it's fairly straightforward in there, no big surprises but you can follow along with me as I do it right let's go and have a look at the let's actually, let's, let's listen to the rattle first, it only rattles when it's hot so when you initially start it what, what seems to happen with these is when they've warmed up and the idle comes right down to sort of 1100 rpm um, you get that sort of slight chatter it's almost like the throttle bodies are slightly out of balance but they're not and you get that slight chatter and it, it makes the clutch basket um, there's a cush drive in the back of the clutch basket that wears and that's what causes the rattle so if you've got a rattly clutch it's probably the the actual the basket, the main bit of the basket with the cush drive assembly I'll show you on the bench in a second anyway right, so let's run this and you can hear the rattle hopefully Right, so this is what the clutch. Right, this is what the clutch. This is what the customers are giving me. Um, <clears throat> apparently, this has done sixteen thousand miles. No way of knowing, really. So the, the rattle. If you ever you get a clutch basket, by the way, and you hear that noise, and these springs are loose. That's completely normal. They're they're supposed to be loose. What tends to happen is this boss, um, this centre boss, is separate to this gear. Um, there we go again. I mean, these rivets tend to get a little bit loose, and the boss chatters um, separately to the clutch basket, and you get like a weird sort of frequency. Get it in shot. You get a weird, really weird frequency sort of vibration that tick over. Uh, right, so that's that, um, and then that's the rest of it. Um, I'll show you all. It's obviously it's got to come apart to go together, if you see what I mean, so we can have a better look at it. And then the other thing you're going to need. So with these clutch covers, they're aluminium bolts and they're single use. 
I'm sure you'd get away with reusing them to be honest but we like to do things properly here so we're going to do it the way it's supposed to be done and then new clutch cover gasket get that in shot so that's that right so I'll show you it coming apart now right so if you do them one yourself you don't need to worry too much about losing oil with it on the side stand most of the oil is over that that side of the engine so it's on its side stand so just put a tub underneath to collect the worst and then what I do is because you don't want oil there's this heat shield on the bottom you don't want oil gathering in that it's a pain to get out so if you just stuff some rag to collect what does dribble out there'll be, there'll be a bit but there won't be loads you won't lose all the oil so first thing is to remove this uh, slave cylinder now the idea you could actually leave this connected to the case and have the case dangling on this hose but I want to put this case in the parts washer to clean the old gasket off so I'm going to remove this and then what you can do is if you just get these bolts out and then you just pull the clutch lever and you'll just break the break the seal And this has got an o-ring to keep the oil up there there's a there's an argument for maybe replacing that o-ring but i've never ever seen one leak so i wouldn't worry too much and then we've got to undo all these they're all the same length i seem to remember apart from one of them we'll find out That one's shorter. Yeah, one different bolt, which is that corner one there. Just in case you need to know. Awesome. Uh, it's going to say tap de tap tap but it's already used so I can hear it. Off it comes. So, like I said, a few dribbles of oil but nothing to get too excited about. And there she is. So, it will become clear in a minute but there's... Um, okay, now if I say on one more time, there's a diaphragm spring it will make more sense as it comes apart. So there's a ring of bolts here to undo. This is a push rod here, um, which runs, it's got a pin on it, which centers it in the gearbox shaft, keeps it true in the center of that bearing. So that can just be removed. That bearing may come out. Yeah, sometimes they're a little bit tight, but that just drops in. So we'll undo these, this ring of bolts, and there's a nut in the center. Now what you could do, you can undo that center nut and leave the how to put it the center piece of the clutch basket will come out as like a cartridge so if you undo this nut you can pull the whole center out and the, then pull the basket off what i like to do is take it all apart and have a look if you see what i mean it just uh, you're with me i'm sure right uh, let's undo all those bolts now and pull that off that in the parts washer, give it a clean. So you can see, see all that movement in the basket? See how loose it is? Yeah, it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be that much movement. So the noise you can hear is that basket shattering backwards and forwards like that it's a good example actually of what's going on going wrong there good illustration rather when you undo these they need to be undone evenly so just crack them all off oh yeah they are tight but they need to be because they're, they're putting pressure on the 
diaphragm spring so you don't want to sort of undo all of them and leave one because it'll be uh, and you'll end up snapping something so you just back them all off in fact what you could do is I'm in danger of waffling here but if you remove two of them completely and then just use four of them to slowly work the spring out you know what I mean Take it in turns. Get yourself some clean rag, not really a how to, but if ever you're taking anything like this apart, I'm sure you already all do this, but am I recording? Yes, I am recording. I was talking to myself then for a second. Get some clean rag, lay it out, and lay all the components out as it comes apart. Keep yourself organised and keep yourself clean. Right, let's find myself some cloth and I'll lay all the bits out. So, so when you're taking stuff apart, just sort of pay attention as, as each part comes off. You know, look for washes and shims and stuff. Just lay it all out. Go on there. You need a little flat screwdriver. There's a little metal clip here that needs to be put. Oh, I've got it with my fingers. Look at that. Right. Okay. Now we need an impact gun. You can obviously you can get a clutch holding tool for these to stop the clutch from spinning. Quick shot with an impact gun. That will um that will come undone that bolt. simple as that. Now in my opinion, some people are like, ah, impact guns, I hate impact guns. If you had a clutch holding tool and a big long breaker bar and a socket, you would struggle to get that undone. Right tool for the job, impact gun. Right, so get this centerpiece out of the way. Again, look for, look for parts, washers and stuff. comes the crutch. We're not replacing this so we're not really that interested in paying that much attention to it but for those of you that haven't ever seen a multi-plate clutch this is what one looks like. Seen a bit of action. Alright that's for the scrap bin. Now then I seem to remember there's some timing marks for this. Right, uh, no, there's no timing marks. There's a punch mark on this gear here, but that's the drive for the alternator on the other side. Just my memory is playing tricks on me. I thought there was some, with some bikes, there's a balance shaft. With a lot of these engines, there are balance shafts um, that need to be timed. So you've got to be careful when you're sort of removing gears that mesh into more than one gear, that there aren't any punch marks or anything that need to be lined up. Um, Okay, so this clutch will be a bit bit, uh, bit hard to pull out, and I'll show you why in a second as it comes out. I've got to give it a little bit of gentle persuasion with a screwdriver, uh, like so. And the reason it's tough to come out is, I think you saw on the one on the bench, there's this gear here, which, how to describe this, um, it keeps the backlash out of the gears. There's, I'm not sure this is even going to be in shot. There's two gears and one spring loaded. And when they go back together, you need to put a screwdriver in and wake them across. Like that. That makes sense. Anyway, so that's it. It's a part. When it goes back together, there's an oil pump drive on the back here. See that push is moved. So there's an oil pump drive here. Um, and there's a couple of gears for it to light, line up to for it to line up to. So this is uh, that's actually tapered roller for the. I think that does. I'm just trying to think. It's so long since I've had one of these apart. 
yeah there's two gears in here there's a th this shaft don't want to get into the weeds with this this shaft drives the alternator but it's also got the tapered roller and the idler gear for the starter anyway we're not going to get into that because this is changing the clutch so that's as apart as it's going to come now so now what I need to do is get the new I'll clean the old gasket off the clutch cover um, here we go I'm in again I'll clean the old gasket off the clutch cover then I'll take apart the new clutch lay it all out just inspect it make sure it's all good no reason why it won't be and then we can reassemble right so we'll uh, are we in shot yeah right so we'll just take this all apart this new one have a little bit of an inspection wash it down with some brake cleaner and then we'll top tip well not really a top tip if you're replacing a clutch with new components i.e. new friction plates you're going to need to soak the friction plates in oil otherwise they will burn out almost instantaneously in my experience um, I know I'm not doing my diagonal thing here but they're not tight the spring isn't compressed um, yeah so if you if you're replacing the friction plates with new you need to soak them in oil ideally overnight what we'll do with these is these have obviously already run so they're sort of saturated in oil so we'll just lightly oil them as they go in it's nice and smooth okay well they've even given us the nut look okay spring wire clip you notice with these two they've got these little um little o-rings on these plates there to help there to help how to put this so assuming you know how I need to do a video on how a clutch works but the idea of these little o-rings is to um, reduce clutch drag so when you let go of the clutch these little o-rings force the plates apart ever so slightly but obviously when you let go of the clutch lever the diaphragm spring pressure can easily overcome um, these you know the rubberiness of the o-ring anyway I don't want to get into that now I need to do a video on how a multi-plate clutch works really but that's not for today so let's just try and get this part in one go there'll be a clip probably holding that in yeah so this I'm not going to dissemble this this is kind of common they have one plate that's held in by a little wire clip I'm not going to get into that now we'll, we'll, we'll cover that when we do a how a clutch plate, how a multi-plate clutch works and all the little design quirks and stuff I just want to inspect these plates they're in much better nick than the ones I've just taken apart and they're really clean which is nice I suspect this has probably been through a parts washer at the breaker's yard it came from this would be my guess Oh, there's a bit of dirt there. Okay. All looks good. So I'll give this a rinse down and we'll uh hmm, does that look a bit No, it's alright. We'll give this a rinse down and then uh we've got this piece as well. Wash it down with some brake cleaner and then we'll reassemble. Happy days. So we're one by one. Just wash each of these parts down. Have another final inspection, and then lay them all out, ready for uh, ready for assembly. Try not to get brake cleaner on my camera. Okay. likes a scrubber I think I've talked about using brake cleaner and either petrol or and this is parts washer fluid but the same thing you can see how it's see how the brake cleaner chases out the parts washer fluid it's plumbing awesome and then it just evaporates and it's all dry perhaps a quick quick bit of a blow with an airline afterwards but you get the idea 
Coolio. Right, here's a tip. Just the tip. Uh, no, I can't do that joke justice. Um, right, so the tip is removing old gaskets, brand new Stanley knife blade. Watch you don't cut your finger off, of course. But if you can sort of, oh, let's, I've already started there, let's start somewhere where I haven't already started. Get that in shot, so if you can just get it underneath the old gasket, get it started, he says, and then you'll find that you can wiggle it around. It's hard doing it and filming it, but you get the idea. You can get the gasket off in one piece, or almost in one piece. So obviously some of them are a lot stubborner. And then you can, if there's any little bits left, you can use it flat like this. And I can't, can't film it and do it at the same time, but scrape the old gasket off. Obviously you don't want to remove any aluminium, but that's a good, it's a good tool. You can buy posh scrapers. I've got, look, I've got a little plastic holder there for a standing knife blade to help it. You get the idea anyway. Right, so I'm going to clean this off now. Everything else is washed off on the bench. And uh, we'll start reassembly. Right, so there it all is. I'm um, all washed off, ready to go back together. Nothing to see really. Um, well, the clutch plates are over on the bench. Um, but there it is, washed clean. The clutch cover gasket is off. The clutch cover and the clutch cover is washed as you saw. Um, sometimes when you pull a, an engine cover off, you're not that lucky. The gasket doesn't stay on the cover. It's stuck on the engine. If that happens, uh, and you're going to be scraping off gasket, this isn't really how to, but if you're going to be scraping off gasket, from an end, what am I trying to say? Don't drop old bits of gasket inside the engine. You'll know, fill it with a rag or something so you can collect any bits if you're physically scraping off on the engine. Um, right, reassembly time. Right, clutch basket, clutch pack assembly. Now, with Japanese bikes, it's normally pretty straightforward. It's just friction plate, metal for a plate, friction plate, metal plate, and you just build a stack, put it together, bosh, done. Well, BMW like to make things a little bit more complicated, and these have got to go together in a specific way. So if you look on one of the clutch plates, let me try and get it in shot. Focus. See how that's got writing on that little tab, and that one hasn't. So one of the tabs has got writing on, if you look at one side. And then if you look at the other side, so there's writing on one side, on one of the tabs. That's got to face the inside of the engine. They've all got to be the same. Um, it'll make sense as you try and put the slide the whole pack into the clutch basket. So the way it goes together, so friction plate, right and face upwards, metal plate. Friction plate, right and facing up, facing upwards with an O-ring. And by the way, all the writings they need to they need to line up with each other. They need to be in the same place, if that makes sense. Uh, so writing here with an O-ring, metal, steel rather, non-O-ring with writing facing upwards. Deal. Oh, right in facing upwards. O ring. Uh, where are we? That's it. Metal. Writing, writing facing upwards. No O ring on that one. Another steel. Then an O ring one. Writing facing towards me, where is it there? Steel. Writing facing towards me. You get the idea? And then this, this has got little teeth on it, they've got to line up. Put that in there like that. Right, I'll take it to the bike and have a fight. Right, this is potentially a massive pain in the ass to do because there's a few things got to happen here and line up to get this basket in properly there's these little pegs here on this oil pump drive they've got to locate in this boss here there's this spring loaded gear which has got to be couldn't do it before on camera probably still won't be able to but you've basically got to get this to line up um, as it goes into the crank gear and then there's a, a similar situation with this gear here for the um, tapered roller 
clutch and the alternator drive so there's a lot of things sort of got to line up um and maybe fast forward this bit then watch me fight with it have i won yes i've won right and then i need a little hooky thing so a little hooky thing and then to get that all those pegs on the oil pump drive to line up you just you can just get to the hook hook the chain here and you can rotate the chain you can rotate the oil pump he says and get the yay yeah, yeah, yeah. get hold of it and you can get the that's it so you can turn that boss with the pins on, Whoa, in short, turn that boss with the pins on by hooking on the chain, just rotating it slightly, and then it pops on that last little bit. So it's, there's a bit of movement in that, but it's nowhere near as slack as the other one. We'll see if it's noisy. And it's not a new basket, this, it's apparently done 16,000 miles, this basket, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, Rightio, so... We need, don't go away, a bit of oil on that. Thrust washer. Right, so top tip, just uh, screw a couple of those Allen bolts in, in this rear piece just so you've got hold of it. Now, the, the tongues with the writing on that we were looking at on the bench, these here, one of the slots in the basket is slightly smaller and that's the one they've got to go into i think it's that one so you have to have a bit of a it's a little bit of a fight but uh, as long as you're patient it should all just slot together so wiggle wiggle you find that once you get it started it um it should go together fairly fairly easily. We've got this uh, spline to line up on the gearbox shaft as well, which can sometimes be a bit of a fiddle. Come on, you know you want to. Why are you not going? Right, so pay attention. When it goes in, you get them all, basically all in. The last plate is the next little notch around. I don't know whether that makes sense or not. So what you do is you pull it out and you rotate the last plate one notch and drop it back in again. And you can hear that it's hit home on that thrust washer. Hopefully that makes sense. Right. Clean that thread with a bit of brake cleaner. I'm just going to loosely put this nut on just to hold that basket in place. Okay. Now then. Ay, ay, ay. Thrust washer going on. Little wire clip. That's basically for the washer to sit on. It's like a seat for the washer so the washer doesn't eat the aluminium um, eat the aluminium part of the basket. There they are. Allen bolts. I'm going to give them a wash with some brake cleaner and I'm going to thread lock them in. Probably not necessary, I just like the idea of putting thread lock on something that's whizzing around inside there. So just show you quickly, you can, how this would come off as a, as a cartridge, so let's get rid of that nut. Now they're all done up, it just comes out easily like that. There's a thrust washer. 
so you can have it as one unit just take one out put one in yeah I really should do a, a video about multi-plate clutches anyway there she is and then you can see where are we so all the ones we're writing on focus got them all stacked up this groove this lower groove I put the clutch basket in a place where I knew that knew, knew the smaller one was and it just he says what am I doing there we go just drops together like that we'll do a video about clutches and what's going on with all these different plates and stuff another day but that's that so the thread in there is clean the nuts clean I'm gonna put a little oh, we're gonna put a little uh, drop of thread lock on here um, and I'm going to do something and you're all going to hate on me for doing it. And it's just experience knowing when to use a torque wrench and when it's not really necessary. There are obviously some applications you absolutely must use a torque wrench. I'm going to do this nut up with my impact gun. You can hate me if you like. Trust me, it's fine. Right, oh guys, um, now don't hate on me. This nut, okay, 190 newton meters is the spec for it. Um, you can buy the great big holding tool here. There's also a BMW service tool which goes in the crank position sensor which locks up the crankshaft. Um, you kind of learn when you've been doing this as long as I have. There are some things you can get away with, not use a torque wrench, speed the job up etc and some things you can't obviously torque wrench has its place quite important for certain very important for certain things but in in, in this instance let's say don't hate on me that's 190 newton meters or ft where i come from um anyway that's that together uh there's a couple of dowels in this gasket you need to in this um, where the cover goes on as I say new bolts to put it put the cover on new gasket I might and I'll show you some footage of it running at the end but pretty much done um, of course you'll need the bearing and you'll need the little clutch jobby uh, apart from that we're pretty much done I'll show you some uh, footage of it running at the end Bit of lube, strictly not necessary, but I just my OCD kind of won't let me do it any other way. Yeah, so there are different ways of putting that clutch assembly together. You could sort of make it all as one piece with a diaphragm spring on the bench and um, leave the diaphragm spring a little bit loose and then sort of fight it in. That's my preferred method. Um, as with most things, there's more than one way of skinning a cat. Torque settings for these. I don't know without looking it up, to be honest. I always do them by feel. Uh, these are just nicked up. These aren't sort of super critical. But these these stretch bolts for the these one-time use bolts for the casing, um, kind of by feel. You just nip them up. They're not as tight as you think. It's probably something like eight foot pound. Maybe not even that. Anyway, it's not a how-to. Just showing you what I'm doing today. Well there it is guys, it seems much quieter, it's good and hot now, I'll probably take it for a spin down the road but I think we're done for this one, thanks for watching, see you soon.
definitely quieter. Definitely, definitely quieter. Anyway, guys, coming to pick it up now. There's all the old bits. Happy days.